Hello, this is Mike with Mike's Walleye Rigs. Wanted to bring you a video on our crush em floating worm harnesses and our smile blade floating worm harnesses. How I developed these originally was back in 2018, a buddy of mine, Doug Rogers, uh, we call him Lumpy, he was fishing a smile blade similar to this, but uh, the ones he had at the time, they were tied on like six foot leaders and uh, they were pretty light rigs. They're pretty light line. And uh, he'd catch a few fish on them, but then they'd, they'd break or they'd be frayed too bad and he'd have to pull them off and change them out. And uh, he asked me if I could retie some of them and uh, make them stronger. And uh, he really didn't need that six foot leader. I think the rigs were originally tied for Lindy rigging applications or something of that nature where he more of a finesse approach. Now you gotta keep in mind Lumpy's running the uh, big boards up on Lake Erie, um, lots of rods. So, so I, I came up with this system for them, um, it, and it really hasn't changed since the day we originally originally tied them. They're uh, two number two uh, hooks, one float, just a couple beads in the in the smile blade, and a thirty five pound test pro swivel. And that, that swivel is part of the key to this, too. It's um, keeping everything light, keeping all the terminal tackle light on it. Uh, you have These rigs have to float or uh, they're going to get into the zebra mussels. If they, they can be a little bit neutrally buoyant. Um, just they can't be heavy and drag or they'll, they'll, they'll be loaded up with zebra mussels in no time where we fish. So I tied those up and... Uh, they worked really well. We we ran those for you know the rest of the early season until the water got warmed up into about maybe sixty degrees, and I, and we're still doing good on the small blades. I said, why don't we try a, a something different? I, so I I tied up these um, double Colorados with double floats, um, same deal. The number two hooks and uh, that same spro swivel, and uh, these are these are kind of neutrally buoyant. Um, you get too big of a night crawler on them, they may, may they may settle a little bit, but they still pretty much float, and uh, they, you don't have much problems with these dragging. And uh, so we were running these, and uh, they were uh, they were just tearing the fish up. I mean, in 2018 on Lake Erie, um, well, there was some tremendous hatches right before that, and there was just full of fish, and uh, still is full of fish, but our fishing was just just phenomenal, and. Uh, Every time I'd come back into the camp and I'd see Lumpy, hey, he was out there fishing with these things. He, I crushed them again on them. And so that's how they got their name from, you know, crushing, crushing walleyes. So um, we've continued to fish these since 2018. Um, I, I will, I'll fish crankbaits and spoons and uh, my spoon harnesses and what have you when conditions are right. But uh, day in and day out, our number one presentation is is running these these rigs, and uh, I, Lumpy is he's the same way. He's been running these things. He fishes all week. I fish all weekend, and um, and day in and day out, they are they they produce. And uh, I'm sure there's guys that catch more fish than us, but you know we do we do well. You know, and uh, so for this being the fourth year. Of having these rigs, they're still doing the same thing. Um, every year we have to see, see little differences um, in, in lake conditions, which make us have to run our gear differently. Um, this particular season, we're, uh, we found a fish when they came into our area. Uh, we're fishing Central Basin Lake Erie. They, by the time the fish got into our area, the water temperatures were pretty warm, and our fish were very deep, and we were fishing for down 45, 50 feet, four fish on the bottom. Uh, to get a three ounce weight down that far, you really, I mean, you really got to go slow. Um, 2018, 2019, we, that same time of the year, you know, or late June, early July, we were setting back maybe 65 feet at, um, with a three ounce weight, maybe fishing 25, 30 feet down um, to, catch, to catch the same, same fish, um, same time of the year. So the conditions change, but but these rigs have worked year in year out for 
four years now. We're seeing the same thing. Uh, since then, we I have developed a couple more rigs that are similar. Um, we get a lot of uh, I've, I've got a lot of call for for worm harnesses with the uh, number four blades and uh, my 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 custom painted blades. This being one of them. This, this is a Wonder Bread blade. And a lot of guys want to be able to change them out, and they've asked for uh, removable clevises. So I, I kind of developed the same same type of harness for those guys that want to be able to remove those. But these things work really, really well. Um, and they're going these are some these are put together with my my custom painted blades, and these blades are just really, really tough, and never have any problem with paint loss on them. Um, I, I've also got a call for. For some same deal uh, some guys is, uh, like to have a treble hook on the back uh, I think they maybe get some of the fish with short strikes we really don't have issues with that in our area uh, we're, our, our water is real clear clear and uh, our fish are pretty aggressive but I think o over maybe in Western Basin early in the year it was colder or maybe dirtier water or with the rivers coming in over there maybe the, the treble hook might help that's how we develop these these rigs, and uh, it just have proven year after year to be a tremendous tremendous way to catch fish. All right, how we run these crushing harnesses. Uh, this might not be new to some of you guys that fish um, maybe Western Basin, the Erie, or out in Midwest. Uh, in Central Basin, Erie, we don't have a lot of guys running worms. They tend to run. Deep diving crankbaits midsummer, a lot of lead, stuff with lead core line, uh, snap weights, that kind of stuff. To, uh, our fish are often suspended 35 feet and deeper. So it, it takes a special rig to get down those kind of depths. So what we do, well, right, we'll take, take our crush them harness and we'll build a leader for it and uh, we'll start out with a cross lock snap, something like that. Sometimes I run those a little bit smaller if I'm really, really trying to keep the whole rig light. You got a hook cross lock snap onto your crushing harness. The other, I, I tie five foot, long, five foot long leaders. Um, I just basically stretch my arm out as long as I can, and that's how long my leader is. If I tie my knots fairly short, I, the, We'll end up real close to five foot. On the other end of that leader, I'll put a, a snap swivel. Uh, this one, I definitely, I just grabbed the big one. I wanted it so you could see what it is, but it's just a snap swivel. Oh, so on the lure, again, you're putting the lure end, you're putting just a cross lock snap. You want that really light. You don't want it, something heavy. The other end, you put a, a bigger snap swivel. I, tend, I like ball bearing swivels. So then that. That, that snap swivel, you're going to attach it to your inline weight or bottom bouncer. Then the other end, you're going to take your fishing line. And on that side, you have, you, you have to have a swivel also. If you don't put a swivel on that, it will still twist up. I don't know how it does it, but it does do it. So you put that on there. So now we got our line. Wonder rod. We're in the sand. Weight. Snap swivel, and it comes over to your crush them. That's how we rig them. One of the big pluses to running these crush em harnesses or anything you're running behind an inline weight or a bottom bouncer or something that's relying solely on weight to pull it down is those kind of systems are very speed sensitive. Uh, give you a, for instance, our in Central Basin here, we might be running, uh, trying to hit 40 feet. If you were put out um, 86 feet of line at one and a half miles an hour, that'll give you about 40 feet. Uh, that's taken off my uh, Trollmaster app. Um, that same setup, if you change from 1.5, where you can get 40 feet, you change that setup to two miles an hour, 
that'll only dive go down 28 feet. So you cut that depth significantly. Um, same thing uh, if you want to go a lot deeper. If you go from one and a half miles an hour to one mile an hour, that rig that was going 40 feet or now go almost 60 feet. Uh, the benefits of that is if say you're uh, you're running tight to the contour line and and uh, you're you got you know maybe you got big rigs set up now boards set out 100 feet on each side of the boat and you're running your gear out and you're running the shallow water and all of a sudden you're you're way too shallow things are hitting the bottom you can get all that gear up off the bottom real quick by just changing going bump it up in half a mile an hour and you'll you'll raise all that gear up really fast and uh, you can if you go one mile an hour you really pick it up off the bottom um, but uh, just a simple small change from one and a half to two miles an hour makes a drastic difference with those those rigs um, same thing if you're out fishing and all um, going along maybe you were catching fish it was early in the morning and all of a sudden and you know, things are slowing down and you think the fish will probably drop maybe you're seeing fish suspended fish will drop down a little bit on the on your uh, graph, uh, cut, cut your speed back a little bit. Just go back to one mile an hour. And uh, that that's, like I said, that, that particular setup where you're we're trying to hit 40 feet, now you can get clear down to, to 60 feet. Um, another plus with that, that, if you think about how quickly that's going up and down, um, if as your boat's surging and waves, it's gonna make those rigs go up and down almost in a jigging pattern going through the water. Um, just more attractant, uh, covers co cover the water vertically and horizontally. And um, when you're when you're talking, uh, say you're fishing skinny water or even small lakes where it might be a lot of stumps and what have you, you know, sticks and debris. These smile blades with the slow death hooks, not only do they have a tremendous amount of action, but um, if you're fishing that that skinny water you hook this into a stump this is relatively light wire hook um, I've caught a lot of big fish on these and caught and pull you know pulling them behind boards and I've never had one of these pull out of a fish but you, you can straighten these hooks out if you get in the bottom and you're fishing probably 15 pound test line you, you can straighten this hook out and get it back out and not lose your gear I'm sure you've often heard about um, when you're trolling and you're going along and you start to make a turn you know maybe you're going to turn go back over a spot and as soon as you start making that turn you know your outside boards they'll they'll speed up and your inside boards will slow down um, um, a lot of times you start making that turn and all of a sudden your outside boards are you know you start getting hits on them or, and, and uh, that sometimes I, I do think triggers bites when you make the turns like that they also, a lot of times, I believe, as soon as you start making that turn and you speed up, the fish that were actually on the line already, now they have to swim faster to keep up with you. And you're either your online boards or your big boards, you know, they'll, they'll, you'll see that bite. Um, sometimes it's real difficult to see it. When you're going slow, it's not hard for that walleye to just swim right with the bait and make it real hard to read the rods. Uh, so a lot of times we'll actually do that intentionally you know, not make the turn. We'll just actually speed the boat up instead of, you know, you're going along one and a half miles an hour. We'll just, you know, turn it up a little bit and go maybe two miles an hour, just enough to, you know, make that fish have to swim a little harder. And then you can see those rods and it, and the same, you might, might even be struggling with fit, catching a lot of junk fish, maybe a lot of white bass or something. And you can, you'll be able to read that that better. Sometimes just turn it up for a little bit, see if you got a hit. If not, turn it right back down where you've been catching your fish. Uh, the way I develop these harnesses and tied them short, I'm sure there's others that do this. It's probably my, my exclusive idea, I'm sure. There, but uh, with these leader, just tying these real short and using fluorocarbon, the fluorocarbon is virtually invisible in the water. So you can, you're adding your own leader to that. And say you want to use, say you're not into trolling. Um, maybe you do a lot of drift fishing, maybe Lindy rigging or what have you. Maybe you want to like Lindy rig a, a float or a, a smile blade. It's like maybe a little walking sinker like that or something. If you just tie direct, you know, don't, don't uh, put a snap in there. Keep that whole system really light. This is one I just pulled off of a, rod that I was fishing 
few weeks ago, uh, running a bottom bouncer. I, I wanted that, that rig to be really light, so I just tied it direct. No, no swivel, extra swivel or snaps in there. Uh, give it a lot of natural action. Uh, so the, a lot more universal than, say, maybe having a wire worm harness or something where, you, you know, you're not going to run that behind a, a, a Lindy rig kind of system. So uh, a lot of applications for multiple uses. Uh, another, another nice thing with the... Uh, Smile blades. And say you start out the day and you're uh, fishing that smile blade, and uh, you know maybe you're drifting, and, you know you're maybe going half mile an hour drifting or whatever, and maybe maybe you just need to start searching for fish. Instead of pulling all that gear and changing all, you can troll those things still. Like there's times when we troll them two miles an hour. Well, uh, maybe the waves are pushing us hard, or maybe just trying to cover some more water. And, Run heavier weights or whatever, but you control those things fairly fast too. So they're very versatile. Um, just to crush them, you can also. I mean, we tend to try to run them one and a half, but I've caught a lot of fish at you know over two miles an hour, especially when I'm especially like big waves. Uh, maybe you just can't get the boat slowed down, so you can, you know, just add more weight to get it down and um, keep fishing. Cost wise, I really. Do think when you compare that you're you know if you're running tying tying your own worm harnesses or you know or or even purchasing them um, from me or any other uh, company that sells worm harnesses they're relatively cheap bait um, and you know so you got a cheap bait and you got to put bait on it uh, it's still probably I think in the end it's probably still cheaper than buying crank baits or whatever you might crank baits or spoons or whatever you might be buying. And um, like mo like my worm harnesses are they're built very rugged. They're built on twenty pound test leader and are really quality stuff. You're gonna get a lot of fish off these. You know, I don't know exactly how many, but I, I would think you could easily catch 20, 20 uh, walleyes off of one harness before you know it starts getting frayed enough that you're gonna want to change it out. You know that's twenty night crawlers there, so. Uh, say it was 24 and I'm like don't know what worms are right now a dozen but you gotta you had to say it was three dollars a dozen for worms that you know you took two two dozen worms and three dollar harness that's still you know, still only nine bucks uh, custom painted crankbait's gonna cost you 12 well, so it's still cheaper than that even it's probably still cheaper than a stock crankbait I've heard it a million times. I don't fish worms. I won't use worms. Worms are dirty. I got buy it, spend extra money on worms. I haven't had worms in my boat in twenty years. Um, I get it. I you know if you if you can catch fish on something else, it's not dirty. Uh, uh, you know why not use it? Maybe it costs more money sometimes, but. Uh, Thing is, they, there are times that worms will outperform anything else. Um, there are times when I think worms are about the only thing you can catch walleyes on, and in those times, I, I really think it it's, doesn't make a lot of sense not to use them if that's what they really want, and that's the only thing you're going to bite on. Uh, you're pretty much wasting your time to fish anything else. But uh, there are other times, yeah, I you know. They might work better there, but you can still catch fish on them other methods too. So uh, just to help settle some of those things or maybe uh, how I get around the, like the dirt. There, the dirt in a boat is really relatively easy to get around. Um, there's a couple things you can do. You can buy, have your night crawlers the night before you go fishing. You literally take a colander and wash your worms off, wash all the dirt off them, stick them in your worm box, stick them on ice so they're ready to go. Take them out. You fish them. There's no no dirt on them. Um, that's one way. Uh, takes a little extra time. The other way is a simple coffee can or bucket. You get out. You take your worms. They're in your bait box in dirt, worm dirt, you know, worm bedding on ice. You got to keep your you got to keep your worms colder. You know, you got to have good bait. You know, it's no good to have rotten worms. Uh, so you got to have good bait, but. You, you get out there, you take your worm bucket, you dip it in the lake, get some water in it. You get your bait box, you get your worms, 
grab a handful of worms out of it, stick them in the coffee can in water right out of the, right out of the lake and this bucket's full of water when you stick them in it as soon as the worms get in there they drop down to the bottom take go back over the side of the boat dump a little bit of water out most of the, almost all this the worm bedding floats and it floats I mean, you dump it off the side of the boat now your bucket's pretty much clean water there and the worms are clean so when you pull them out there's you're ready to go it's, it's not getting all over your floor your boat um and then the other thing is when you know you keep your guys on your boat just tell them and you knock a worm off on the floor pick it up throw it out don't stomp it into the floor it's it takes a few more minutes but it's uh it, you, you don't have to you really don't have to deal with uh, it's not really that dirty if you take care of the worms that way i fish for a couple weeks on my small boat that has carpet in it use worms the whole time never really had it it, it doesn't look all that bad and the poor stuff from the trees another thing with these with you know you're running just that double hook when a fish bites it most of the time that both those hooks are in the fish's mouth so you don't it, uh, they don't get caught in a net as much they will but not as much um also because there's only two hooks and there's really nothing to twist or turn on them like maybe a crankbait sometimes the hooks don't go in like they get them but then you got the baits pulling sideways um, these things the hooks should be pulling straight and true on them and, uh, usually you don't have a lot of them pull out uh, another another benefit is the safety you know you're fishing any any kind of bait it gets close to the boat and the angles of the line starts changing um, inexperienced fishermen not knowing how much to pull on them um, you know if this pulls out of the fish right at the boat and the lure goes flying you only have two hooks flying versus maybe nine on that crankbait so, uh, much I think much safer or okay I'm gonna put it out there it might be a little bit controversial but uh, I'm gonna say it anyways under the right conditions 55 60 degrees plus midsummer summertime pattern for walleyes that worms and worm harnesses are probably the most consistent bait to use um, not saying you can't catch walleyes on crankbaits there's thousands and thousands of walleyes caught all summer long on crankbaits um, but i will say that worms worm harnesses are probably the most consistent you will probably have less bad days using worms um, with the same token though you know, worms and worm harnesses aren't meant for all year long either there's there's a time and a place for everything um, late late some late fall winter time typically aren't known to be great times to be fishing worm harnesses that uh, they work much better typically in warmer water than cold water a um, lot to this the uh, the there's a lot of scent uh, you're running it slow the you know, walleye doesn't have to chase it down um, and when you're going through the water there i mean these things are these things are as seductive as a polynesian girl at a luau i mean they're, they're, they're you know, it's hard to beat the thing going slow and walleye can come right up on it smells it and easy meal for them so there i said it that uh, sometimes you can't beat worms Okay, it stopped raining long enough. I can get outside and show you guys how we store our rods and reels with this uh, crush and floating worm harness rig we got. It works for any any kind of rig you're using with inline weights, a lot of other things too. But uh, it, it, all the systems are no good if you can't put them away and take them back out without your rods getting all tangled up. So this is how I do it. One of the keys is I have I'll either use that that clip which is just a hair clip get those from the dollar store sometimes I'll use rubber bands and I'll instead of using that clip there I'll, I'll put a rubber band around the, the reel you know but uh, show you how easy this is now while this works just un take the clip off unwrap the line around the reel hook would get caught and there we go put a worm on there and send it so how we put this back together 
So you take the lure, hook it onto the framework of the, the eye. Never hook it into your eyes themselves. It, it can scratch the eyes or break them out. Uh, and uh, start with the start with the weight up the up the rod a ways, you know, kind of maybe halfway up the rod, something like that. Got a hold of the line that line goes to the uh, lure. Have an open bale, free spooling reel. And then you just start wrapping the line around. You start from the top. You start wrapping it around the top. And wrap it around. And as the line comes tight, when you get your weight where it's getting close to the bottom of the rod where you want to put the clip on, on you just stop it. And uh, I don't like to leave these rods loaded up too much, bent too hard. So that's about right for, for it. And I just grab the, the uh, weight, hold it next to the, the rod. Put the clip on, the whole works, and it's good to go. Stick it in the rod rod holders. Good for the next trip. I want to thank you for watching this video. I think you'll find crushing worm harnesses to be very universal and uh, have applications anywhere there's walleyes found in this country. I want to thank you for all your support. And if you'd like to uh, purchase any of my products, including these crush and worm harnesses, you can find them at mikeswalleyerigs.com. I also have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. Thanks for your support. God bless.